It's a co old Coca-Cola refrigerator. My buddy got it at a scrapyard. Uh, he works at the scrapyard and he called me up. I told him to be on the lookout for him. I took the glass out already for the for transporting it home in the back of my truck. It's got the motor and all that stuff already removed too. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna modify this a bit. Uh, I'm gonna cut off the bottom of it so it'll fit a little nicer. It's kind of tall right now, so it's gonna fit a little nicer in my room. And uh, we're gonna hook up the heating element and put in the trays, clean it all up real nice, paint it. And we're gonna turn this into incubator. Just follow along, and I'll show you how to do it. I'm gonna shorten this up, make it look a little nicer, and then we'll start giving her some love. it up real quick it took us two days of paint just because of work and everything it's getting late so uh, I got the second cone on I got the inner inner portion painted uh, me and my dad are gonna drag it inside uh, it's starting to rain so we're gonna get inside hook up the electronics and show you guys how to turn this into an incubator transformation so far but that was just the looks it's not doing any type of heating right now uh, it says that the electronics are already all off of it so it's just basically a big big empty fridge right now with no heat and no cooling effect so now we got to add the heat ele heating element uh, you can either buy this from like Pangea or some other type of uh, companies that sell it uh, you can buy it right by the foot so you can get a measurement of the back uh, this isn't exactly to fit because I just had this extra, but um, this is off an old rack of mine, and um, 
Yeah, so all this is is you just this 12 inch heat tape along the back. You can use different sizes based on whatever size fridge you have or cooler or whatever you're using. And all we're going to do is we're going to stick this on the back with some uh, aluminum tape. And then we will drill a hole out the back for the for this power cord to go out and also for the probe of the thermostat to go in to monitor the temperature. If this doesn't provide enough heat, you could always uh, add additional heating strips on the sides. Uh, this is where you want to set up your incubator a couple weeks ahead of time before it's time for your eggs. That way you can test your temperatures to see if it's holding the right temperature that you want. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. So uh, I will add, add on the rest of the tape. Uh, this tape can be a little tricky to work with. It likes to fold back on itself and it's very, very sticky. So uh, a little trick that we've learned is if you fold the tape in half, just kind of crinkle it while it's still on the head of the backing, it'll hold its shape and it won't fold back on itself quite so easy. It's just a little technique we've learned because this, this tape's a little hard to work with. So then you, get, you get the backing started, you can just pull it off like normal tape, but it won't fold back on itself. And otherwise you won't be able to get this apart. So you put that little crease in there and it helps hold the hold the tape from sticking to itself. And we'll just run that right along the edge of the tape, edge of the heat tape. Now we'll hold it in place now, right where we want it. We'll do the same for this side. Like you can see here, we got nice tape to the back of the incubator. And like I said, if this doesn't hold enough heat, we'll add additional heating strips to the sides. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Next is you got to drill your hole in the back for your plug and also your probe. So you'll see what, just kind of pick a spot. So I'm going to go up near the top. We're going to add a little bit more insulation to the top, but for the time being we'll just go to the top and we're going to drill a hole right through it. Alright, so once you get the hole in the front, you can pull right out the back. And there you go. Uh, so we're going to fill this hole back in, but for the meantime we'll just let this cord hang. And uh, when we put on our thermostat, we're going to run the probe right through there. So now that we got the heat tape on the back, we got to find a power source for the heat. You never want to plug the heat mat into the wall because you can't control the temperature. So that's where this herpstat one is going to help us out. If you get any of the herpstats I'd recommend, there's also Vivarium Electronics, but you can get this from Spider Robotics or Pangea or other type of companies. But um, they're really good thermostats. Uh, all you got to do is just one plug is for the, for the outlet for the power. We can set this right on top so we can see the temperature. And then the, you want to take, take your uh, uh, heat probe. This came out of my old incubator, so it's already used. I'm going to stick it right through the front. Now stick it right in the back here with the same hole that you're. You're going to want to stick this uh, somewhere, not right at the top, but somewhere near the top. Uh, so that way it controls the, the hotter parts of your, your, um, your incubator. So we'll stick that there so that way that right there will help control our temperature. All right, so right here is the back of the herp set, so you can plug your, this is the, the cord to the heat mat. We can plug that in. So now the heat mat will is powered through the herp stat. You can plug your herp stat into the wall. And then that should light up. And then right here, um, you can set all your whatever degrees. Uh, this, I have to change the temperature in this, but um, I think I was running about 89 degrees. Uh, we're going to add a fan. I bought this off of Amazon. I can add the, in the link below. Um, it, it's got a weird little plug thing here, but it's just a, a basically a computer fan that plugs into a normal outlet so that we don't have to worry about any of the weird attachments or anything. But 
Uh, it's also got a speed adjustment so I can control how fast the fan is going. Alright, so with this fan, uh, the reason you want a fan in an incubator this size is to help circulate the air because even though you have this temperature regulated, this will actually be a couple degrees warmer at the top than the bottom. So this fan will actually circulate the air and that's where the control comes in handy because you can control how fast it is to, to, you need it to circulate more or less. Okay, turn it on. Also, make sure to uh, caulk the hole that we ran these cords out of, and uh, that will prevent any extra air escaping. And then, um, yeah, you can just set it up. I got the fan going. I got some eggs in here. And there we go. This here's the finished product. As you can tell, we got the got a rack in there. We'll put the rest of the racks in once we get removed. But uh, there you go. We got it's all heated. It's all insulated. We got the door on got a nice frosted effect from the being outside for a couple of years but uh, otherwise that's your incubator slap some stickers on we're good to go